Is it worth investing in property in Spain? In all honesty, I'd say yes. And the reason behind that is there's a lot of new properties here, and they'll say they're great investments and all this sort of stuff, but there's a lot of old properties that, in my view, can be a better investment. Let me give you an example. There's a property near us where there was two two properties, similar, well, same design, same builder, same, uh, pretty much same everything. But the difference is they're like two blocks away from each other. Not, not a better view, nothing like that, but literally if you add them in the same block side by side, they're, they're the same market value in reality. The one apartment sold for 50,000. The other one is on the market for 80,000. So the rental potential is long term. There's a shortage of long term in, um, rentals in La Mata. The, you know, there's more people wanting than there is apartments available. Short term rental, exactly the same. In the holiday season, it's flat out. Everywhere is chock a block with people. So the re return on investment in those both work. Next thing is the key element on this is getting it at the right price. At the back here, there is like studio apartments at 140,000 or whatever. And then there's, um, I think for two bed, like quarter of a million euros, that sort of stuff. Uh, they're brand spanking new. They're sold with all the singing and dancing whistles and, you know, latest aircon, environmental this and blah, blah, that. Uh, but let's be honest, you're not going to live there. If you're going to live here in La Mata, then maybe you want that. Maybe you want a good rating one with no aircon problems and everything else because everything's brand new. It's got energy efficiency, uh, treble glazing, whatever for yourself. But when you're renting out, you don't really care. <laughs> you don't really care. People go, oh yeah, but it's more energy efficient. Guess what? The one that's already built is more energy efficient because it was built 20 years ago. It's already there. Um, that's energy efficiency for me because you know it, you know it's more environmental because it already exists. You're not building a new structure. Um, but reality is, there's a lot of properties here that are quite simply easy to rent out. But also, you find that the the prices, if you're fussy on looking, can be quite low. Um, they, well, they get fluctuations. You're sitting there going, well, "Why is that one this price and this one's that price?" Just don't get into these people that are caught up in debt. That's their debt, not your debt. There's an apartment not far from us where the guy wants to sell. He can't sell it because the bank won't let him. Because the only way he can sell it is reduce the the um, the sale price. But his debt is higher than the value of the property. So the bank won't let him reduce it. So he's stuck there. He can't sell it. Um but he's a, he lives here all year round anyway. But the reality is so many people bought in the boom years that there's a lot of people with negative equity. The bank doesn't want to get, get the housing market moving by reducing the prices. It doesn't want to sort of call in the debt and then just try and recover uh, some of its losses. Because let's face it, the bank's on a win-win either way. Because if there was like a negative equity in an apartment, and then they remortgage it to somebody else. They'll recover it from the mortgage. <laughs> the banks don't lose. They're, they're on a win-win either way. But they, they're they greedy. So they want all of it. They want their money. They, they want their cake and eat it. And what's happened is they've stagnated the market. You know, new builds, there's in-house financing and other reasons because they don't cost as much because there's no debt in them. Um, what do I mean? Well... If it costs, say, 40,000 euros to build a property and they're selling it for 120, um, by the time you pay your deposit and everything else, uh, they've recovered the, the majority of their money already. The first few years, they've had their money back. But a lot of these, because they're older build, they've been valued at X, and then there's debt on it, and then you get people that remortgage to buy somebody else's house, so there's debt on debt. Um, they don't move as fast. So there's a lot of properties in this area which quite simply are easy rentals. You can rent them out like for long-term people like myself. I'm trying to encourage more people coming into the matter as well. Uh, but also 
there's a lot of holiday rentals. When you, if you've seen some of the videos, what it's like here in holiday time, it's jam packed, very, very busy area. So yes, there is a market potential there. What you need to be careful of is looking at the locations. Like I know La Mata is very, very busy, but you'll find like Torbeca is a bit cheaper, but is it as busy? I wouldn't, I don't like Torbeca, uh, not, no offense. Um, it's it's got a nice harbour and everything, but I wouldn't want to live there. It's like Pinot Noir, which is the other side of us here. It's not um, as nice as it used to be, in the sense that it's had some vandalism. It's had the, the Chinese restaurant shut down, the hairdressers shut down, and all that. The, the shops have shut down, but they haven't kept the um, the look of the place like a holiday location um, as such I think they're stagnating that a bit it needs a bit of regeneration not a lot of money spent but it involves actually regenerating it to build it back up um, but generally good return on investment if you shop around get the right locations the right setup um, yeah it's worth it